Hey, it's Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your host of the I Heart My Life show. This is episode 190, 10 reasons I love running a coaching business. So when I was first starting out in I Heart My Life about seven years ago, I remember interviewing multiple people who had coaching businesses as well as people in other industries. For example, I interviewed somebody who owned a yoga studio. And what I quickly found out about the yoga studio business was that there were a lot of elements of it that I absolutely did not want to do. For example, this woman in particular, her name is Heidi. She told me that there were times where she had to step in and teach yoga classes. If some of her other teachers were sick or unavailable, she had to cover their shifts. There were also times where she had to clean bathrooms if for whatever reason they didn't have the funds in the very beginning to have the housekeeper or I should say the the cleaners come into the studios, that fell on her. Sometimes people weren't able to come. And so she had to kind of pick up the slack. And there were certain things that she shared with me that were far more important than cleaning the bathroom that led me to realize I did not, in fact, want to own a yoga studio. So today I'm sharing the, I guess, similar information about what I love about running a coaching business with you Because I know there are a lot of people out there who are interested in starting an online coaching business, maybe wondering, what are some of the perks? What are some of the drawbacks? What what do you get to do as a coach, especially as somebody who has been in the industry for a while? I have a great perspective on what makes it exciting to run a coaching business, what I love about running a coaching business, and how I really feel it's one of those eclectic careers and industries where you get to bring so many of your talents and unique abilities to the table on a daily basis. So I'd love for you to listen to this. Maybe it'll resonate with you. Maybe it'll spark something in you and help you see that it's time for you to start your own online coaching business. The world truly does need more coaches. There are over 3 billion people online, so there are more than enough clients to go around. So definitely listen to this episode and take action if you feel called to move forward with your own coaching business. This episode is sponsored by iHeart Coaching, our signature program for new and aspiring online coaches iHeart Coaching is your one-stop shop designed to support you in becoming the next standout online coach. Whether you're brand new to the digital space or looking to take your coaching business to the next level, this is a comprehensive program that's going to show you how to build a successful coaching business from A to Z. We're going to share how to generate maximum revenue and book out your calendar with dream clients. To learn more, go to iHeartCoaching.com. All right, so let's dive into the 10 reasons why I love running a coaching business. Number one, I get to utilize my life skills and experiences, the good and the challenging, to help people around the world. So there's a school of thought that basically says that your trauma helps to dictate your purpose. And I think that's so interesting and also really incredible when you think about it. So often we go through challenging experiences and difficult times and we wonder what the purpose was. But when we're able to take that trauma or that challenge and turn it into a purpose, that makes it so much more, I guess it makes it easier to be grateful for everything that we experience and it gives it gives our trauma a reason for its existence, right? We all know that through challenges we grow, grow stronger, But it's so important to remember that your challenges can also give you incredible information and insight that you can use and take and pass on to other people. So that's exactly what happened for me. When I went through my quarter life crisis back in 2008, actually 2008 to 2013, I was in a lot of pain and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I felt confused. I knew I was meant for something big, but couldn't figure out what that thing was. And I didn't know at the time that I was going to be helping other women through that same experience, helping them find their purpose, help them get clear, help them discover happiness. And that's what's available for you, too. Maybe you have a certain skill set from your career, from your um, de- your degree or your education, right? And oftentimes we think, okay, well, I had this career, I was a lawyer, I was in corporate, and now you know I'm going to throw in the towel. Is that really what I want to do? But the truth is, is that you can take something from every chapter that you've been living in, every chapter that you've experienced, and apply it to your coaching business. And the other key piece to this is that you can use that talent, use that trauma, use that challenge, and help people around the world. The really cool thing is that we now have access to something called the World Wide Web. And I've spoken to a lot of coaches who started in the 90s and the early 2000s, and they experienced something very different to what we have today. 
One of my coaches even said that in order to promote one of her events, she had to stand on a street corner and wear one of those signs that basically, you know, covers the front and the back of your body and hope that people would attend. And that's not the case. Today, we get access to people all around the world. We have clients in so many different countries. It's incredible to see everyone coming together, moving forward with their dream, moving forward with their vision, and looking to better their lives. And that's what's possible for you, too. All right, number two is I get to channel my creativity through branding, creating programs and courses, fashion, and photography. So the truth is, is when I started I Heart My Life, I had no idea how to build a program, how to build a course, how to do my own branding, what to pick out in terms of my clothes for photo shoots. I freaked out on my first photo shoot, literally was in tears for the entire evening after I had that shoot. And so I had to learn a lot of stuff along the journey that I wasn't really comfortable with, but a lot of it helped bring out a creative side in me. I've always been somebody who loves writing, and that's part of number three when we get to that. But I didn't realize that I'd also love creating programs and developing courses. And part of who I am at the core is someone who is a creative being. So getting to kind of infuse my creativity into other areas of the coaching business has been so, so powerful and so fun. The funny thing is, is I've actually built most of my current website. It's a template. It's based on a template, but I tweaked it. I built it. And I did that for multiple websites in the past as well, because I absolutely love it. Now, would I go and build websites for a living? Probably not. It's probably kind of like your kids. You know, some people love their kids, but don't really like kids in general. I'm not one of those people. Don't worry. But I don't think I would do it for a career, but it's something that's been amazing to get the creative juices flowing, to be able to put a brand out into the world and just be creative. I also carve out my Fridays for creativity, whether that's writing, whether it's working on branding stuff, whether it's developing new programs, that's been really important and been exciting for me. All right, number three is I get to put my love of writing and my master's in nonfiction writing to good use to impact the world through books, emails, and articles. Again, when I started my coaching business, I did not have an email list. It was basically 15 friends and family members following me in the beginning, but every single week I decided I was going to write a newsletter. And actually, if we back up before that, when I was looking to transform my mindset, when I was looking to practice the law of attraction, I actually started a blog. And so I had a gratitude blog. So there were all these things that enabled me to put my love of writing to good use. And for those of you who don't know, I also have a master's in nonfiction writing, which was basically the whole reason why I was able to move to London and live there on a student visa. And I wrote a book back then all about my journey with online dating. That is a book that has not been published. I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day. Um, But that was kind of my first step into the world of nonfiction writing. But growing up in high school, I always was in accelerated English classes, and that was my big passion. I had journals. I literally documented my entire dating history with James. I documented, documented all my teenage years, all my childhood years. And so writing was a big part of of my life, and it still is to this day. Now, I didn't know how to write sales emails. I didn't know how to write sales pages. I didn't know how to write scripts for podcasts. I didn't know how to script out video series. And there were a lot of things that maybe I shouldn't have done myself. I should have probably outsourced them. But I love writing, and writing is that thing that I would do Uh, above everything else, if I'm being honest, it's that thing that I would do even if I wasn't being paid for it, even if I wasn't a published author. And I think that's such a powerful thing to be able to say that you get to do the thing that you love in your business on a regular basis. All right, number four, I get to teach on stage and on my podcast, which taps into my desire to help and educate others. So again, the podcast was not a part of the vision when I first started out. Teaching on stage wasn't necessarily a part of the vision either. I will say that I always had this this vision of being on a massive stage um, and like a stadium type of experience. I went to an Oprah Winfrey event back in 2014 and I was like, I want to do this. But I didn't see myself necessarily being the main one on stage the whole time. I saw myself featuring other amazing speakers. But in getting into this this coaching space, I've realized that I do have a voice and I do have a message to share. And so it's something really cool to be able to teach and to be able to you know, personally work with incredible mentors and then spread different messages. And for me to be able to learn and then share my experiences and what my what wisdom I have with others has been such a blessing. 
All right. The next one for me is I get to connect with other amazing people through the entrepreneurial network that I've created. So this is a big one. So this one is something I also never really expected. I didn't expect to want to connect with tons of other entrepreneurs. I'm very much an introvert, so I don't need tons of friends. But at the same time, one of the things I realized is that not everyone in my life is going to understand what I'm doing. Coaching in particular is a very unique space. It's very niche. And in particular, you know, a lot of my college friends and high school friends, they didn't have any experience with this online space. And so it can be very lonely. And one of the first uh, incredible decisions I made was to be a part of a group program with 200 other coaches who also had similar goals and were, were looking to achieve big things and transform their money mindset and transform their bank account and help their clients around the world. And, you know, that was really huge for me to start to build relationships. And it really is true when they say your network is your net worth because other people have connections. Other people have clients and friends and family members who you don't have. And the more people you can connect with and the more people that you can spread your message to, the bigger your business is going to be and the faster it's going to grow. And what I've experienced is that people do genuinely want to help. Oftentimes we think, you know, we need to keep our ideas to ourselves or we don't want to bother people and we don't want to ask for too much. But what I've experienced is that people do want to help. And when you build a business um, with other people and you collaborate, you know, it's just like raising a child. It takes a village and you're not meant to do it alone. So I highly recommend that you utilize this incredible network of the online space. There are so many groups out there. There's so many communities and there are people who do really want to connect with you and support you. All right. Next one is number six. I get to work from anywhere in the world and travel. So now I will preface this with saying that having your laptop on a beach with the sun beating down on it is not exactly as glamorous as one would think. You can't actually see your screen. So when I say work from anywhere in the world and travel, I mean probably indoors from a hotel room or in a lobby. But it is amazing to be able to be anywhere in the world and be able to run your business from your computer. Now, of course, there are pros and cons. Sometimes that means it's very difficult to disconnect from your work, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't have to request, you know, two weeks off. I don't have to hand in my notice. I run my own company. So I'm able to decide when I travel and when I don't. I'm able to decide when I take time off and when I don't. All right, the next one is I get to offer jobs and opportunities to others. So for example, this one pertains to, um, my husband, James, in particular, so and my team. So basically back in 2015, as my company grew, I realized I was going to have to get some help. I could no longer do this on my own. And if I tried, it was not going to be successful. So one of my coaches actually recommended that my husband, James, resign from his job and join me in the business. Now, he and I had never, ever planned on all of on that happening. In fact, I called him. I was actually at a retreat in Bali, Indonesia, and I called him and I said, you know, my coach recommends that you recommend that you uh, resign from your job. How do you feel about that? And now this was not out of the blue in the sense that he knew, you know, he wanted to do something different. He wasn't happy in his career, but we'd never really thought about him joining me uh, in in the coaching business. And at the time, he wasn't even thinking about becoming a coach. Uh, But he, for whatever reason, said yes. And he handed in his notice the very next day. And within a week or within two weeks, you know, he was he was self-employed alongside of me. And then, you know, a few months passed and he actually ended up becoming a high performance coach certified by Brendan Burchard. And, you know, he was my first team member. Then from there, the company really grew and we were able to bring on more people and more coaches and more team members and really bless other people in that they were able to be a part of something big. They were able to be a part of a movement and a mission. And that was really cool for me because I never, you know, I never really gave it any thoughts. I didn't know how many people I was going to have on the team. I didn't know that James and I would be working together, but to be able to have jobs and opportunities that we can give to other people um, is such a blessing. And of course, there is a flip side. And a lot of people experience the pressure of paying a team and having to deal with payroll and having to manage people and all of that stuff. But you can flip that to you get to manage people, you get to pay a team. And I think it's really cool when you think about 
the knock on effect that this is having your business being successful means that your team members get to take their families on vacations or pay for their kids education, right? So think about what happens, follow that thread when you're successful, when the company is successful, what happens to all those people who are in your corner and able and, um, what does it enable them to be able to do? Okay, the next one is I get to decide how much money I want to make, and I know that my opportunity for wealth is endless. Now, I want you to understand that this is really, really important. For a lot of people listening, you might be thinking, well, you know, how do you know your opportunity for wealth is endless? How do you know that you can make as much money as you want? I truly believe that I can. Now, does that mean I'm going to snap my fingers and it's all going to happen tomorrow? No, because there are steps to put into place. There are things that need to happen in the growth of a business in order to reach certain levels. But I do know that the sky is the limit, and I do know that anything is possible. And especially when it comes to sales, a lot of people don't grow up with the skill set of selling. Why would you, right? And yet all of us are selling on a regular basis without knowing it. We sell um, to our, we tell our friends about a restaurant. We tell them about our favorite Netflix movie and we go on and on and on and we convince people to do things. But when it comes to selling something that we've produced, it's a different story. And it definitely is a skill set that we have to be able to um, develop. But when you're able to develop that, it takes away a lot of the fear around finances that most people have, especially people in a career where it is kind of there's a finite amount of money that you're able to make unless your role is sales based or commission based. And so we have to work within the confines of that. But when you're a business owner, the sky's the limit, right? And there's there was somebody, I forget who it was, but I talk about this all the time. I should probably look it up. There was someone who said, there's no problem that can't be solved from a sales email. And I thought that was so interesting. And it's true. You know, if you're experiencing lack or you're experiencing, um, you know, just a lack of, of financial abundance, well, you can learn how to sell. You can learn how to put your product out into the world. And when you know how to do that, and that's a skill set you're confident in, you don't ever actually have to worry because you know if push came to shove, if there was, you know, some sort of market crash, you would be able to sell something and get yourself back on your feet. You would be able to put yourself out there. You would know how to hop on a call, how to approach different prospects, how to send a sales email, how to, you know, post on social media, Uh, connect with followers, all of that stuff. That's a skill set. And when you develop that and you also pair that with the right mindset and a positive way of thinking about money, well, you're unstoppable and you don't ever have to worry about your financials. That doesn't mean that you don't pay attention to your bank account. You don't pay attention to the numbers, but there isn't that worry because you know you've developed a skill set that you can fall back on, that you can rely upon to keep moving forward. Okay. The next one is I get to read and learn for a living since part of my job is to provide others with information, content, and strategies through first testing it myself. And part of that is really being able to also improve my mindset by working with the world's top coaches and mentors. I think that's such a cool thing. Like I literally talk to our clients about the fact that listening to podcasts, reading, improving themselves actually has to be a part of their daily routine as coaches. If you aren't filling yourself up, if you aren't constantly learning, how are you going to be able to provide next level experiences or full support to your clients? You're not. And so getting to learn for a living, you know, somebody who has always been an avid reader, that's that's just amazing. I can't imagine anything better. And getting to learn from mentors and, you know, being able to walk the talk and understanding that it's important for me to be fully supported if I'm going to support other people. Again, how awesome to be able to put, you know, working with top mentors and coaches in your company as a business expense. You get to develop yourself as a coach on behalf of your business. I just think that's so brilliant. All right, final one here, which I know is going to excite a lot of people, is I get to decide how much I work and how I want to work. Now, for me, obviously, the word heart is in my company. The way that I run my business is very much heart centered. I have to feel excited about what I'm doing in order to sell it, in order to put it out there. I know some people aren't the case. Some people aren't um, 
so emotionally attached. And of course, there are times where I do things and I rally and I'm able to get behind it, even if I'm not 100% in it. Right. But at the same time, I'm very um, passionate about the work that I do and I need to feel excited about it in order to give it my fullest. And at the same time, obviously, there's there's a flip side to that. Sometimes I'm too dedicated. Sometimes I work really long hours. And so what I've learned over the last few years is to really decide how much I do want to work and then outsource the rest of the stuff. Now, it takes a bit of time to get to that point. You know, it's taken me six or seven years. But it's totally worth it to be able to, again, bless people with roles in your company and also decide how much you want to work. I'm able to take Fridays off if I want to. I'm able to travel. I'm able to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, go offline a little bit early today and I'm going to work a little bit extra on Sunday. I actually like working on the weekends from time to time because it's super quiet and I can really focus and get things done. I get to create my own schedule. So if any of that is of interest to you, I would highly recommend that you consider coaching. Coaching is such a rewarding job. It's such a, I can't even call it a job, to be honest with you. It's such a rewarding experience. It's such a rewarding role and it's available to you. And I think, you know, these are, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other things that I could put on this list, but I wanted to share this because sometimes it is challenging. And for those of you who are already coaches and you're listening to this and you're running a business, there are moments where, of course, you want to throw in the towel. And there are moments where you have a list a mile long of all the things that you don't like. But I highly recommend that you have a list like this of all the things that you are grateful for that you can bring yourself back to in those moments where it feels like it's not working, you don't even know why you did this, you don't know if you're qualified, you don't know if you're helping people, because all that stuff, of course, will come up from time to time. We are all human. But there's so much good here. There's so much good that far outweighs the bad and the struggle. And so we need to focus on it and shift our mind to those things on that list when it feels like it's not worth it or we want to give up. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll look forward to talking to you soon. I hope you loved today's episode. If you are feeling called to become a coach yourself, go to iheartcoaching.com. There's so many opportunities available for you. And there's a way for you to make this fit into your schedule, into your life, into what you envision it to be. There are endless opportunities within the coaching space. And if you are feeling called to be a part of that, go to iheartcoaching.com. We want to work with you and support you in moving closer to your vision. You deserve to have somebody holding your hand, showing you step-by-step how to make this dream a reality. So you can start today by going to iheartcoaching.com. We hope you love this episode. Thank you so much for being an avid listener of the I Heart My Life show. Take a second and leave a review. It would mean so much to us and we read all of them. And for further inspiration and life and business tips about creating a life that you love and achieving massive success, definitely follow us at I Heart My Life on Instagram and at I Heart My Life Now on Facebook. See you next time.